And good morning, it's Monday the 19th of June 2017, a warm welcome along, a very, very hot welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk, coming to you as always live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire. Now today, I am dressed today for those of you uh, with balconies. Those of you with balconies that live in blocks of flats, my darlings, that do not have garden, I am today bringing the garden to you. Look at this, eh? My rose shirt, which you haven't seen for quite some time because it hasn't been able to be done up. Now, I can't lie to you. It is a little bit tight around the mirror, uh, around the middle, but I'm hoping that will improve shortly. You see my idea? You see my idea? I know that you're sitting there in your little flat, a little bit hot, all the windows open, got the telly on flickering away in the corner, which you must turn off when I'm doing my show. I do demand full attention, boys and girls. Uh, no garden, and you're thinking, well, oh, what would it be like to have a garden? Well, now you can just watch me instead with my rose shirt and, of course, my spider plants. I'm ve- I don't understand. People aren't interested in the spider plants this time. Isn't that strange and mysterious? <clears throat> Last year, around about this time, I I uh, offered spider plants. I had about five or six of them. I said, anyone who wants a spider plant, please let me know. Well, the email lit up, dear. Hundreds and hundreds of people wanted spider plants, of which there were only six. I was actually just going to cut off one leaf and give that each to them. I thought that would be very cool. Call it narfot in here, I tell you. Oh, where's that thing? Let's see if I can create a bit of a breeze with this thing here. Oh, God, it, it's really hot in here. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stay in here today. Um, but I thought that would be cruel to just give you a leaf. So I did give away the six spider plants. Now, this year... Uh, a few weeks ago, I started cutting off the little spider plant babies. There aren't any on here, I don't think. No, little spider plant babies and repotting them in their own little pots. And I have downstairs about 15 or 20 of them. This time, only one person has asked for one. I mean, you just can't win, can you? Maybe I should put them on eBay or FreeCycle or something like that. Does anyone want spider plants? If so, send me a private message, boys and girls, and tell me where you're going to be to pick it up. One of the many venues that I work at, either um, tonight or Friday, at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Uh, it's 8 till 11.30 tonight with a karaoke, cheap drinks, or... And do you know, I, this has actually shrunk. I think this has shrunk. Look, this has shrunk, isn't it? No wonder it won't do up. Must be poor quality. I mean, I did get it off Amazon. <laughs> it's about 20 quid. <laughs> I think this possibly may be the last time you see this, unless I lose even more weight than I, than I, I had intended to do. Mm. Um, yes, so that's where I am tonight. Or you could come on a Wednesday night to the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street in Islington. That's at 8.30, that one. Or Sunday night at the Camden uh, Eye for Karaoke Eye. Karaoke 8 to 11 o'clock on Sundays there. Any of those places that you want to be to collect your spider plant, just let me know. And one will appear there in front of you. A little bit quiet tonight. It actually very quiet last night. I was a bit disappointed last night at uh, the Camden Eye. Not just the pub, but the whole area seemed to be quite quiet last night. Uh, I just assumed it was because it was so hot in there. Uh, I spoke to a couple of people on the phone actually on the way in. And uh, they said, oh, we're not coming out tonight because it would be so hot in the pub. Incorrect. Uh-uh. They've got a massive air conditioning thing in there. And as I walked through the door, even with the doors open, as I walked through the door, I was hit by this beautiful cool air. So it wasn't hot at all. So very nice. We did have a few singers, uh, but it was a bit of a struggle last night. But never mind. It's back there again next week. I hope you'll be able to turn up then, boys and girls. Yes, Cam's and I karaoke. 8 till 11 o'clock uh, every Sunday night, OK? Um, let's say hello to some of our early people this morning. Good morning to Gustav. Says, morning, Butch. You're looking incredibly sexy this morning. Amazing what a bit of soap and water can do. <laughs> I haven't washed my face yet, actually, Gustav. I haven't washed my face. Besides, if I looked dirty on your computer, knowing you, it's probably dirt and dust on your computer screen. <clears throat> in that hard-to-let property that you live in, Fulham or wherever it is you live. Is it, is, it, is it Shepherd's Bush? Shepherd's Bush. Have you been to Shepherd's Bush, anyone? Oh, that's a dump, that is. Oh, 
How can anyone want to live in Shepherd's Bush? Gustav lives there. Right in the middle, he's got a little tent on that bit of green in the middle of all the shops. Well, it's awful, Shepherd's Bush. Almost as bad as Croydon, I tell you. Good morning to John Coops. Say a happy birthday to you, John. Adam the Plumber's there. Adam has been doing his kitchen all weekend. He bought a new kitchen, okay, off eBay, actually. He bought... You can get, did you know that? I didn't even know that. If, you, if you're a bit short of money and you want a decent kitchen, no need to go and order one for £10,000. Oh, no. If you go on eBay, there are people selling their kitchens, their old kitchens. And when I say old, I don't necessarily mean 20 years. <coughs> Some of this stuff is like a few months old and they've put it in, decided they didn't like it and resold it on eBay. And um, I think sometimes, I think Adam uh, purchased one. Was it 60 quid or something like that? Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap, and he went round. Of course, you've got to be about, able to do a little bit of DIY doing this sort of thing. Not for me. Oh, no, 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 no. If I installed a kitchen, the cupboards would be all over the place. There'd be unwanted holes in the wall. I can't do that sort of thing. It's not me. I don't have the patience. Coming out with that little spirit level thing with a little bubble in the middle and all that business. I don't I don't want to do all that, you know. But Adam can do it. And he purchased um, a kitchen, a uh, second-hand kitchen on eBay for something ridiculous like 60 quid. Went round there, took the cupboards off the wall, took it apart, took it back to his uh, new place where he's living and uh, has been putting that in all weekend. And I saw the photographs, which I can't, I didn't, I didn't put them, I didn't put them on the, uh, on the uh, on, on on this show, uh, what do you call it? Program. I can't show them to you at the moment, but um, it it looks fantastic, unbelievable. And uh, you know, a, a ten thousand pound kitchen for sixty quid. Excuse me. Can I, can I... Oh dear. Sneezing well this morning. No, it's not hay fever. Doesn't happen outside. Only in this room, mind you. I'm not surprised because I had to um, pull away some a desk. For, can you? I don't know if you can see this desk. Just a minute. Let me see if you can see it or not. Yes, you can. See that desk down there? See that one there? I had to pull that away from the wall on um, uh, uh, Saturday night this week. Uh, because I had a, a cable to install. I've got a little Apple TV in my bedroom. It's not a TV, it's just a box. Uh, and um, uh, it works wirelessly or by cable. <coughs> and I can stream stuff from my phone to the box to watch it on the telly in my bedroom. For example, YouTube videos. I'm always watching little YouTube clips, uh, cats, old TV stuff and... Sadly, ITV, iDents. I watch them all on my thing before I go to bed. And for some reason, the Apple TV kept losing the Wi-Fi signal. Now, I don't know why, because it's right next door to the router. But it did. And I got fed. And when that happens, it, and, and it suddenly says, we have lost connection. I'm like, oh, here we go again. And then you start mucking around and all that. So I thought, well, I'll install a cable. So I did already have a little hole there. Um, but I got a bigger drill. And attach that and made the hole bigger. So the Wi-Fi, not the Wi-Fi, what's that cable called? Ethernet cable. I think it's Ethernet cable. So I was able to push that through the hole and now it's plugged directly in the, into the uh, router and job done, job finished. All done. It works perfectly now. But let me tell you, the dust behind there. Oh, my God. You've never seen so much dust. I didn't clear it up. I shouldn't really tell you. Don't tell my sister this. She'd go mad. I didn't get the hoover out. I just pushed the, pushed the desk back. And I, th <laughs> I thought I'd do that in a few years' time when I had this room redecorated again. <clears throat> it was only redecorated about three years ago. Dirty person I am, you see. So that is a minor DIY thing I can do. But Adam can install whole kitchens. He's a plumber. Now, the thing is, right, if Adam's a plumber and he installs a kitchen with the pipe work... Does that make that DIY? Because he's like a professional, isn't he? You see what I mean? <clears throat> it's like if you were to ask me to come and host a karaoke night for you, it wouldn't be a DIY karaoke, would it? Because you've asked me to do it. So if Adam is installing his own plumbing, is that a DIY job? Or what would you, what would you call that? 
there's an interesting thing for you to ponder her on this morning. <clears throat> is it DIY or is it not DIY? Are you any good at DIY? Have you got some horror stories to tell me? Who's really mucked up a DIY thing? If you have, you can call in now. Phone lines are now open. Look at them all rushing to the phone. 020-8144-3477 is my phone number. 020-8144-3477. Or you can Skype in if you've got Skype. Skype username, all one word, United Kingdom Talk, OK? Righto. Uh, good morning to Alan Russell. Morning, Alan. Oh, I did see your um, little message yesterday tagged right onto the end of the show uh, when I said I had chips. I was doing chips in the oven, uh, which were just slightly overcooked. Not burnt, slightly overcooked. And, uh, oh, thank you, those of you that are sharing the video on your wall as well today. Very much appreciated. Thank you for sharing the video on your wall. I do like, that's very kind of you. I never ask you to do it. You just do it of your own accord. Thank you so much from the bottom of my tiny beating heart, which is in pieces after being broken so many times. Uh, what was I saying? Um, Alan... Da, da, da. Chips, that's it. Chips yesterday. Uh, so I did do my chips and they were fine in the oven. But Alan was concerned how many chin sins are there in chips. Depends how you do them. In my case, none. There were no sins in chips yesterday. You take a potato, you cut it in your... Well, actually, it's more wedges than chips I did yesterday. You cut it into the wedges. You spray it with fry light. Shove them in the oven for about 45 to 50 minutes or so. No sins in those. Down the chip shop, probably about 10. And the thinner they are, the more sins they are, because they absorb more oil. Not nice. Do your own chips. Fry light sprayed over them. No sins. Not that it matters, matters to you, because you don't put any weight, do you? Huh? Morning to Diane. Good morning, lovely Diane. Hope you have a nice day as well, my lovey. Uh, Tony Powell says, good morning, Chris. Hope all is well. Having a busy morning, working on a new album. Hope you're enjoying the weather. Tony does music stuff. Uh, also hope people are remembering not to leave their dogs in the cars for any length of time in this heat. Are you referring to people's partners or animals with four legs? Because I've seen a few dogs in my time. <laughs> I look like one myself, don't I? I could see myself in a car like a dog. Please don't leave your pets in cars. Also hope people are remembering not to leave their dogs in cars for any length of time in this heat and are giving them plenty of water. Water everywhere. Someone nearly took my head off for pointing this out to them yesterday when I spotted their dog in the soaring heat in their car. Well, that's the problem, Tony. Uh, you were probably quite right. Probably quite right about leaving the dogs in the car. Well, I know you are. But people don't like to be told. They don't. People are awful now. Awful. In fact, I received an email yesterday from a, a very, very good friend of mine, Anthony, which I've yet to reply to. I've got a bit of bit of a chest today, so I've, I'm, I'm just clearing my throat. You can't hear it when, you, when I do that, can you? I hope you can't hear that anyway, um, which I haven't yet replied to his email. Actually, now I can't get it up. Um, let's try again. I wanted to read this to you because people are just getting worse. and People are awful now. Honestly, they are. I don't actually like large groups of people anymore. Not because of terrorism or anything like that. I just, they're just horrible people. An awful lot of horrible people. Fortunately, not many of them come to my nights, if any. But there are, oh, there are a couple. Yes, there are a couple. They really are awful people. Now, my friend said this to me. Um... On the subject of the fire, although it's not just the fire that they're talking about, uh, he says, this fire is a terrible business and I think some of the media is disgraceful, both on the left and the right. I'm beginning to think social media is a bad thing. Well, I, I, do you know, I think I agree with him. I think I agree with him because there's so many people on there on social media shouting the bloody heads off all the time. Not actually knowing what the hell they're talking about. Have you noticed this? Now, of course, it has to be said there are good things for social media. For example, I wouldn't be able to do this show if there was no social media. I mean, I could do it on YouTube. I don't think that's classed as social media, is it? I could do it on YouTube, 
but then you wouldn't know about it, would you? The very fact that I'm able to do this live on Facebook, you know, you get a little indication, oh, uh, the show is about to go live, and then I say hello, and you're seeing this because there is social media. But there are some very um, uh, uh, annoying stuff on Facebook uh, uh, that I know. I gather Twitter's even worse. I, I just don't use Twitter hardly at all. All I use Twitter for is to advertise what I do. You know, I, I, I just don't get it. And I was saying on, was it on Saturday's show this week? I was saying, how many people are actually on Twitter? Are you think the way the BBC and these uh, uh, TV programmes always push it? These hashtags and things all the time. <clears throat> Which I don't understand. I, you know, there, there's a hell of a lot of people that haven't got a clue what a hashtag is. You know, probably perhaps someone watching this show at the moment would put hashtag listening to Chris Reardon. Why did you have to put the hashtag at the beginning? And why do you want that on there? You know what I mean? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, the email from my friend goes on to say on the subject of the fire, the left are unfairly blaming Theresa May. Now, I have seen this on there. The fire is due to the Tories. Get them out. Get May out. What the hell is that fire got to do with the Conservatives? I just, you know, did Theresa May, so, you know, I'm not making light of this. Did Theresa May go around and, and, and you know, get the Tories, it's therefore get May out. OK, that is. A, and I've seen that on a lot of walls. It's ridiculous. Did Theresa May go round there in her little car, get a match, put it to the side of the block of flats, wait till it took light and then drive off? No. <clears throat> it is so ridiculous. And then if you say something to them, oh, well, it's all down to the cuts. Well, hang on a minute. Does the government look after that block of flats or is it the town council? Who's running the town council? Is it not a Labour council now? Ah, yeah, but it was Conservative. Ah, yeah, but it's Labour now. Oh, well, yeah, but that's because it's in London. Well, hang on a minute. Who's in charge of London? It's the Labour bloke, isn't it? Ah, uh, well, that's it was built, though. It, when it was built, if, uh, if it was built, that was in the 1970s. Guess who was in power then? Not that I blame Labour or don't blame anyone for it. It's just ridiculous how they go on and on. Now, I said to you last week... Um, <clears throat> about not needing to unfriend anyone. You can unfollow people so that you can't see their posts anymore. You know how to do that. I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people have unfollowed me for the amount of posting that I do, although it just generally tends to be non-political and more fun. I do do a little political one now and again, as you well know. Um, but, you know, not always, very rarely. But these people, every last... Oh, it's the Tories. Oh, it's the Tories. Oh, it's the Tories. Every time something goes wrong, it's due to the Tories. What on earth is wrong with them? Madness. <clears throat> the email goes on to say, the right are blaming the fire on the EU green targets. Even though the panels are illegal in Germany and we can set our own regulations. That's the right, you see. So Conservatives are blaming the EU. But they're probably batting it off because the left are blaming them, you see. No one wants to take responsibility anymore for anything. Have you noticed that? When is the last time someone apologised to you for something that had gone wrong or they'd done wrong? They don't apologise. You see them on the telly. Companies, politicians, whatever... And that something has happened, and it, you, it's clearly their fault, but they never, ever apologise. How did we get to that state? I was always taught when I was a boy, you know, you do something wrong, best thing is to say sorry, and then it's all forgotten. True in this case as well, perhaps? If something went wrong? Look, I'm really, really sorry about that. Huh? No one wants to say sorry anymore. They just pass it on to someone else. How did we get to that? Um, 
where uh, uh, and there are kind of for me particular things I would do where you wouldn't get an apology. Um, in, in fact, they turn, they try and turn the blame around onto you. Examples: uh, the place I used to work at in Clapham. I find uh, I found the customers over a period of time. Not all of them. There were certain groups. But the customers got ruder and ruder as I was there over the years. If you speak to the other DJ there, the one that I work, where, where I used to work in Clapham, I left a couple of weeks ago. And I would come up and ask for a song and I'd say, oh, I haven't got that one. Well, why haven't you got it? Well, I just haven't got that one. Do you want another one? No, I want that one. Why can't you get it? And it's a bit like that. <clears throat> and in the end, look, just go away. And then they say, no need to be rude. The best example of that was uh, I was working up a place in Coventry a number of years ago now. It was um, not Guy Fawkes. What's the one after that? Oh, the one before that. Uh, you know, with the ghosts, um, hauntings. Oh, my gosh. Halloween. It was Halloween and bang on 12 o'clock, out come the stuff. You know, Thriller, Michael Jackson, uh, Monster Munch, Ghostbusters. While Thriller was on, this girl come up to us. I don't like this. Get it off. Full dance. This is this is not a bar. This is a nightclub. Lots of fantastic light system they've got there as well. I beg your pardon. I don't like this one. Can you get it off? No. Why not? It's a, because it's Halloween. It's a Halloween song. Well, I don't like it. Get it off. You don't like it? No, get it off. Oh, well, if you don't like it, bye bye. Oh, there's no need to be rude, she said. Stupid cow. How stupid can you be? Just an example that people just don't say sorry anymore. Going back to this email. <clears throat> the Daily Mail is saying that the company owners have an expensive house and minimise their tax. A Guardian reporter posted where May was visiting and told people to go and protest. I mean, why would you do that? <clears throat> why would you why would you tell a group of people to go and protest? Where a politician is. Why would you do that? She's gone to see if they're all right. And she couldn't get close to them. I, 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 when I watched the news and she was visiting, uh, trying to visit the, the uh, uh, fire people. <clears throat> I watched the crowd and I thought, well, it's a good job those police. She will be attacked. And it's not her fault. It's not her fault. It looked like she was about to be attacked. No wonder she couldn't go around and shake hands. The Queen can do it. Of course she can. Because the Queen is neutral. She had, Have you ever heard the Queen say, I prefer Labour, I prefer the Lib Dems, I prefer the Tories, I prefer the Greens. No, she is completely neutral. So of course she can do it. Although I will say in these times of terrorists and things, I think she takes a lot of risk, the Queen. But then again, who does she upset? Who does she offend? You've always got people to take, and the Queen, aren't they? Got all this money and all that business. No, it's not really theirs, is it? And I think they're aware of that. The email goes on to say, My conclusion is this country is becoming vile both on the left and on the right, and the press has always been vile. I think the press has got worse and worse more recently. Really do. Attacking people left, right and centre. <clears throat> I've seen stuff about Jeremy Corbyn sometimes, and I thought, I, what? That's a bit harsh, isn't it? You know, both sides. The solution is moderation, but that doesn't sell papers or make people angry. Are other countries like this. That was the email from a friend of mine. I won't say his name because he might not want to be um, identified with that one. But it's so true. I mean, it's so true. I have to say, you, you, you don't really see Tory people on, on Facebook attacking the left in the same sort of um, anger as the left attack the right on Facebook. Do you? I mean, you just don't see it. 
And I don't know why that is. Why is people so angry? And they're like sheep. A lot of people are like the sheep as well. They see something on there, and that doesn't have to be a political. They see something on there. Oh, we'll cut and paste that. Send this to 500 people and you will receive a free pound coin in the post. <laughs> really? Do you really believe that? And the amount of people, oh, quickly repost this, otherwise Facebook will start charging you five pounds per year. Really? Do you honestly believe that? Because if you're that stupid, you shouldn't be on here. Virus hoaxes going around all the time. People just, they just don't get it, do they? I was always taught, if you don't know something about something, then shut up. <laughs> oh, well, it's all very, very strange and mysterious. Back to your messages this morning. Uh, Gustav says, Jesus, how gay is that shirt? This is not a gay shirt. I beg your pardon. Excuse me, do you not watch Holby City, Gustav? Do you watch Holby? Eh? He wears shirts like this. Sasha in Holby. Do watch it. And he's as straight as they come. <clears throat> Dear me. Good morning to Joey Millen. Morning, Joey. Hope you're well this morning. Um... Um, bah, 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 bah. let me see. Mark Cording's there. Good morning, Mark. Thought you were coming to sing last night. You should have come last night, Mark, because before I started, uh, I took over from um, uh, a lot of rock music that was being played in there. And you would have done so well to start off last night with Highway to Hell. That would have fitted in so well last night. Thank you. Adam reckons, no, you can't get rid of the shirt. Just have your arms shortened. Yes. Maybe, but do they take a bit out of the middle? Because you don't want to lose a hand, do you? I mean, lads, can you rem can you just imagine if you had no hands? Dear me. I would, no one would be able to touch me up, would they? I do like a bit of touching. Morning to Alan, who said the incident last night, early this morning, is only down the road. Yeah, there was another incident, wasn't there? Uh, someone attacked the poor Muslims as they were um, uh, coming out of the... Um, uh, prayer. It's a late time to have a service, isn't it? I suppose that's normal for uh, for Muslim uh, religion, is it? To have like prayers at like midnight or something like that. We don't have any of that in the Catholic world. Oh yes, we do. Midnight mass, of course we do. Although they don't, they don't always have that at midnight anymore. They used to have it at our local church in Roehampton, midnight mass on um, uh, at Christmas and Easter. They do one as well, but they stopped. They had to stop doing it at Christmas because all the people were coming in drunk <laughs> to the church. <laughs> Terrible people. Morning, Christina. Morning, Christina Ewing. That is my favourite surname, Christina Ewing. Reminded me, of course, the Ewings in Dallas. Ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba. Yeah. Mary Wright, Nick Asprey's there. Scott Ogilvy. Morning, Scott and New Zealand. Courtney is loving the shirt. Thank you, Courtney. Um, another terrorist attack in Finsbury Park. Yes, sir, we saw that. No, I don't think we don't think it was terrorists. They don't think it was terrorists at the moment. That might have changed. And Craig says, what are you wearing? A flowery shirt, Craig. A very, very flowery shirt. Thank you very much. I think it's quite nice. Now, we can't be weird for you too long today in here. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I've got the air conditioning man coming tomorrow. Um, and I've got to clear the area ready for him, which is uh, just over there. There's desks and things like that. And uh, I've got my, my... Have you seen my Disney thing? Do you want to see this? Look at this. You'll like this. Now, my friend, my friend Kelly Kim, tells me that this is probably worth quite a lot now. Hang on. <laughs> a bit of dust on there. Look at this. This is my Disney witches thing. It's very heavy. This is really very heavy. Do you like this? And um, I was going out with someone. This is about 1999, 2000. And I took them to Euro Disney. And uh, he bought me this while he was there. Isn't it lovely? I think it's got, has it got snow? Yeah, it's got snow as well. Kelly, Ke oh, wait, hang on a minute. It's got a thing, oh, do you know? Da, 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 da. Evilness, witches. We like witches, so I've got to move stuff out of the way. Where am I going to put that now? Over there, hang on. Oh. Got to move all those bits and pieces out of the way, ready for the uh, air conditioning man to come tomorrow morning. He's going to get here at 8.30, so I've got to do that today, um, as well as go up the shops because I've run out of strawberries and bananas. I've run out of lots of stuff. 
And um, uh, so I'll have to disappear right now, boys and girls. OK, now let me have a look. Right, oh, we're going to do today's birthday then, and then we're disappearing to go on my very, very busy pack day. Uh, tomorrow's show will be late night, as always. Uh, we do a late night show on Tuesday, sometime around about uh, between sort of 11 p.m. and 12 midnight. That's tomorrow. All right? Uh, birthdays today, then. Dusty Springs. You're not 55, are you? I find that hard to believe. It says 55. You can't be 55, Dusty Springs. One of our favourite drag queens. She's such a nice person as well. I had a great show on Saturday night. At Saturday night, I do a little bit of DJing, but I mainly host cab uh, cabaret at a Central Station in Wharfdale Road, Kings Cross. We had Carmen Dioxide. She was hilarious. First time I've ever worked with her. I was being very, very naughty with inappropriate jokes towards her on the stage. You wouldn't have heard them if you was in the audience. I tell <laughs> I do try to put people off when they're doing their stuff, unless they're up their own asses, in which case I don't bother. There are a few of them who think they're actually really fantastic people. <laughs> no, no, there's some you've got to be able to give it out and take it at the same time. You see, I was giving her a few inappropriate drugs, which I was so disappointed she didn't actually use them herself. Never mind. So happy birthday, Dusty Springs, 55 today. Uh, John Coops is a young 34 today. Happy birthday, John. <clears throat> he used to come around to the karaoke's in uh, Belushi's and places like that. Kyle Jones. Morning, Kyle. 30 years old today. Good morning, Kyle. Uh, James Gresswold. Hello, James. Long time no see. Happy birthday. Mark Alston is 41 years old today. What is that little Is that a little bag you've got? It looks like a, a Christmas bag that you're holding there. Liam Porter, 29 years old today. Peter St. James. Uh, Paul Cuthill. Good morning, Paul. I remember being on holiday with him. That was in Italy. Well, I used to do some DJing. Um, uh, I used to do DJing in a ski resort and a summer holiday type thing. You know, so it was twice a year. It was, it was great times. I um, must be going back 10 years there. Happy birthday, Paul. Uh, Nicola Evans. Nicola. The lovely, lovely Nicola. 32 today. Happy birthday, Nicola. Lots of kisses. <coughs> One of the bar staff at Central Station. Uh, Craig Lawless. Morning, Craig. Happy birthday to Craig. Uh, Louis Ramirel, Ramirez Alam. Happy birthday to you, Louis. Uh, Hayden Stephen D. Jones. 24 today. So young, Hayden. So young. Happy birthday. Roxy Terrett. 55 today. That's one of my ex-neighbours. When I was a little boy, and I mean a little boy, she used to live a few doors along on the balcony in our flat in Hersham Close in Roehampton. Oh, yes, that's where we lived. She was one of the other children along there. Happy birthday, Roxley. All right. And, um, oh, that's it. John, you, you've got about, you, you've got, John, you must have about 10 blooming profiles on Facebook. How did that happen, eh? Oh, dear. Anyway, let's sing the song and uh, then I shall disappear from your lives. Only for a little while, only for a while. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday, everyone. Just before I go, I wanted to remind you, if you want a fiver for nothing, now don't get too excited. Uh, you can get free cash now with the Super Soar Away Sun newspaper. Oh, yes. Just by buying your favourite paper. Uh, brilliant new rewards club. This is in the sun this morning. <coughs> which launched this week will pay back our most loyal readers. Just pick up a paper each day to collect your Sun Savers codes and we will give you... Five pounds when you've collected... I mean, you must be desperate to want five pounds like that, and yeah. So if you keep buying the paper, you get a fiver. That can't be bad, can it? Money for nothing. Money for nothing. That's it for the show today, boys and girls. Thank you very much. Just a short one today, because I've got loads and loads to do. I'll prepare myself, and I should see you again uh, late tomorrow night. Sort of around about 10... Uh, 10... <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I don't... Should I read you? No, I better not. <laughs> I've just got a very inappropriate text message. 
no, I'm not going to read you that. I can't. No, I don't dare read that. I just got a really inappropriate text message from my best mate. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a clue. Something to do with having repairs done to his to his house. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. All right. Uh, yes, I should be with you around about 11 o'clock uh, midnight tomorrow night for a late night show. OK, so that's Tuesday night going into Wednesday morning. Uh, tonight, it's karaoke, boys and girls. Come and join us at the... At, uh, where am I tonight? Hang on a minute. I can't remember now. At um, uh, Central Station tonight. That's it. I'm at Central Station tonight uh, between 8 p.m. and 11.30 OK, uh, it's cheap drinks as well. And you can come and sing us a song or just watch our wonderful, wonderful singers. That's karaoke tonight uh, uh, each and every Monday. And oh, itchy nose, dear. Cool, it's all going wrong now. Uh, tonight and every Monday, 8 till 11.30, along with cheap drinks. Have a nice Monday and I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Cheerio now. <laughs>